Hi, everyone. I'm thankful to have you here this Thursday. It's the 16th day of January. That puts us over the top and on the downhill side officially of the first month of 2020. And it also uh, puts us weather-wise headed towards more winter-like weather temperature-wise. We've not seen a great deal of that, of course, this winter season. Perhaps more rain and winds and sun than anything else. No complaints with the sun. We see it making a return, but it's not going to do much to warm us up next week. I'll outline your forecast in just a few moments. Headlines tonight will include talking about the free roaming horse situation across the Commonwealth, Eastern Kentucky, and here in the viewing area. It's going to be a subject of reporting for your news today and the Sagersville Independent for the next several weeks to come. We'll be talking with a couple of uh, rescue organizations and others throughout uh, this next perhaps several months tonight and we'll actually sit down with two representatives of the Appalachian Horse Project and talk about what they're doing here and some other related information on that subject as well. Why Sagers, while a Sagersville man has entered a plea of guilty to illicit sexual conduct uh, pertaining to kids under the age of 12, under the age of 8 to be more precise, while living and teaching in Cambodia. And all that will come right before I rush out the door. You may notice by the backdrop a little more sunshine than usual at this time. Uh, that's because I did an effort to get out of here by 4 o'clock to make it to Belfry for the seventh time in just the past few weeks. We, of course, following the boys basketball team, have traveled to Belfry for the Mountain Schoolboy Classic and the 2A tournament. Tonight, it's actually a regular, regularly scheduled game against Belfry, and that's where we're headed. So, highlights in tomorrow night's program, as well as a lot of other news we've got sitting uh, on the back burner as well. One thing before we get to our local headlines, and it's not a good thing, sepsis, a very serious health issue, often causing death across the nation. Perhaps what's even more serious is the fact that it's now believed that the um, number of deaths and hospitalizations associated with sepsis is at least twice as bad as researchers and doctors actually thought. There's a st study that was published. It's out today in The Lancet. It's a health and um, medical journal, and it says that sepsis uh, accounts for about 20% of deaths around the world. That's one in five. And it also is still the leading cause of death in hospitals here in the United States of America, cause, costing the healthcare industry and individuals about $25 billion annually. More than half of all sepsis cases as well around the globe, not in the nation, but around the world, were related to children in 2017, according to the most recent data. And that subject material published today in The Lancet. I'll be right back with our local headlines right after a few words from some of our sponsors. Let them know you're watching every chance you get. Tomahawk Feed and Farm Supply, the region's largest inventory and lowest prices on feed for pets and livestock. And now they have Bernie. Gear so warm, you'll think it's summer. Shirts and outerwear, overalls and more for gentlemen and ladies. And Tomahawk always has the best prices on pickup and delivery of gravel and rock that's dense grade all the way up to big class 3 and drain pipe 4 inches all the way up to 72 inches. Tomahawk Feed and Farm Supply in Sagersville at red light number 4. Appalachian Wireless wants to know if you're tired of settling. Settling for a phone you didn't really want because it was more about the cost of the device rather than the phone you really wanted. Well, Appalachian Wireless has the solution, and it's called the Appalachian Advantage. With Advantage, every phone model is back on the table because you only have to pay the taxes on the device you really want. Many of our hottest smartphones are less than $50 up front, then a few extra dollars on your monthly bill with Appalachian Advantage. Payment agreement is required to store for complete details. Right now, for pennies on the dollar, a huge selection of like-new laptop computers, a fresh stock of video games, the Cadillac of dog tracking and training systems, new hunting rifles, accessories, and ammo. And they always stock, buy, sell, and pawn gold and silver coins and jewelry with a new selection just in at Parkway Gun and Pawn in Sagersville, 349 Pawn.
It can be one of the hardest parts of being a parent. You can beg them, bribe them, hold them down and try to force them, and sometimes you still can't get them to take their medicine. Well, problem solved at Parkway Pharmacy with Flavor-X. Let your kids customize their medicine with some of the best flavors that really do taste great, and it's totally free with your child's prescription at Parkway Pharmacy. So stop the suffering, theirs and yours, for free, and get your Flavor X flavored medicines at Parkway Pharmacy in Salyersville. Pick a game, any game, any game day. Any game day means it's a great time for a party tray from your Salyersville Lee's famous recipe. That's right, all the buffalo wings, crispy, hot and spicy wings, hot fried pickles, cheese sticks, little mini corn dogs, jalapeno poppers, double dippers, all perfect for game day at your Sagersville Lees. We've got the big college championship next week. You've got the Cats in the middle of their season. We are in the middle of high school basketball. Pick a game, any game. They're all perfect for a party platter. A big monstrous tray of appetizers, perfect for any game or any gathering at your Sagersville Lees Famous Recipe. A former Sagersville man who had lived in Cambodia for several years and then had been fired from his job there and was making his return to Sagersville has now pled guilty to illicit sexual conduct while traveling and living in Cambodia. Now 36-year-old Mickey Reif admitted in federal court earlier today that he, as a citizen of the United States, engaged and attempted to engage in illicit sexual conduct with two minor females while traveling and living in Cambodia, one his own adoptive daughter. Rife admitted in that plea agreement that between September of 2012 and December of 2018, he traveled in Cambodia, and between March the 7th of 13 and December of 2018, he resided in Cambodia, and that during those times, he touched two minor females under their clothing and inside or on their genital areas on more than one occasion. And he also admitted that both minor victims were under the age of 12 when the illicit conduct happened. After being indicted for two separate counts back in February of last year, he pled guilty to a single count earlier today. He faces up to 30 years in prison and a lifetime of supervised release and up to a quarter of a million dollars in fines. That sentence yet to be determined by the court. In that original criminal complaint that was filed in January of 2019, authorities alleged that while Rife was a teacher in Cambodia, he had sexually assaulted a five-year-old girl, and during the investigation, they undercovered further allegations of sexual abuse dating back to 2013. And then in February of 2018, during that investigation, his ex-girlfriend contacted the U.S. Embassy, giving them information that he had allegedly sexually assaulted a Cambodian female student. Actually, she had a long-term relationship with Rife. They had adopted a small Cambodian girl about two years old at the time, and she accused him of sexually abusing their child, as well as later information coming out during the investigation that a former vice principal knew of two other small children under the age of eight that he had sexually assaulted, believed to have happened in 2013 and 2015. Once again, his sentencing set for this May the 27th. We've got a great deal to cover tonight, a lot of ground to cover in regards to free roaming horses. Uh, real quickly, tonight's McGoffin Farm Bureau community calendar starting off with a special wish. Yep, birthday wishes to Caden. Caden is Caden Ravenscraft. Caden Ravenscraft is 14. And from his mamma and papa Mead, happy 14th birthday, Caden Ravenscraft. Happy, happy birthday to you. And this just in from the McGoffa County Health Department, a free community baby shower for moms out there who are pregnant or 60 days postpartum. You are invited to attend January the 23rd, not too far away in a few days, 1 to 3 at the Floyd County Health Department and January the 30th here at the McGoffin County Health Department from 2 to 4. Join them, but call and register and get a free gift. 
889-0328 or 515-9483. Lunch and drinks will be served at both locations. The Kentucky Moms MATRS program. And the Water into Wine Food Program wants me to remind you that their regular food pantry day is every Wednesday of the month from 9 till noon. The last Wednesday of the month, for example, the 29th of this month, it's 4 to 6. And their Senior Commodity Day is always the third Thursday of each month from 1230 until 4. And my calendar is always available for you for announcements just like these, birthdays and anniversaries too. Tell me, and I'll be sure to tell everyone else. Lastly, by way of announcements, sponsored nightly by the McGoffa County Funeral Home in our obituaries, 78-year-old Anna Sue Holderby Vanover of Brownville, Texas, but formerly of Sagersville, passed away Sunday. Survived by daughters Mary Ann Johnson, Karen Sue Alsop, and Elma Faye Blackman. Funeral services for Anna Sue Vanover are going to be held this weekend, Saturday morning at 11 at the Sagersville Funeral Home. The family will welcome friends Friday after 3 and contributions can be made to the memorial fund at the Sagersville Funeral Home in the, na- in the name of Anna Sue Vanover. Has Logan Corporation got a deal for you? So the next time you need one, you have one. The fact is that Logan is manufacturing so many dump bodies that they're closing out forever their stock on brand new Honda generators and water pumps. They've got over 50 brand new units in the box with the factory warranty on sale right now at prices you can't find anywhere. Two inch pumps, three and four hundred dollars off. Three inch pumps, four inch water pumps, trash pumps, Honda generators, the quiet portable EU series and the 1000 and 2000 watt models, hundreds of dollars off. You can get an EU 1000 25 pound generator for $642. Save almost a thousand on their big EB 6500 generator with many more models available, all at prices lower than anywhere you're going to find online or elsewhere, guaranteed, at Logan Corporation, while they last. Don't drive or let your family drive in this or this before doing this. Stopping at Conley Tire in Staffordsville for brakes, oil, alignment, and, of course, tires. Thousands of tires in stock every day to fit anything with six months no interest financing and over 33 years of quality service with a smile. Conley Tire in Staffordsville. SSI and disability cases are harder to win these days. You need all the help you can get. If the government has turned you down, I will not. Many factors are considered when a claim is being processed, like your age, education, physical, and mental disabling conditions. When it comes time to winning your disability case, you should not face a federal judge alone. You need an attorney who is experienced, determined, hardworking, knowledgeable, and dedicated to helping you win benefits that you deserve. If you need help with your SSI or disability case, call me, Donald Wayne McFarland, and let me go to work for you. From brakes, exhaust, suspension, fluid changes, to expert collision and auto body, to turning your 4 before or diesel from mild to wild, get real auto maintenance, paint, and repair at Black Smoke Performance in Dixie of Sagersville. 349-8785. Just like Christmas, the after Christmas sale at Fraser's Prater Drugs Seasonal Shop only comes once a year and it's on right now. And man, is it on. 50% off everything Christmas. All Christmas, half off at Fraser's Prater Drug Store's Seasonal Shop in downtown Sagersville, where you need to be making your way to save big, save half on everything Christmas. All the gorgeous Christmas home decor, decorations, and more while it lasts at the Seasonal Shop in downtown Sagersville. 
At Sagersville National Bank, they know your house is much more than your home. It's an investment, and for many of us, the biggest we'll ever make. And whether it's for needed repairs and maintenance, or a new addition or renovation to give you some more room and more equity, let Sagersville National Bank deal with all the financial work and worry. Real and real competitive, hometown, homegrown, home improvement loans at Sagersville National. In a response, not just to the already documented and ongoing situation and problem, but as well to the most recent fatal shootings of 20 horses just last month in Floyd County, a resolution has been brought before the legislators in our state Senate this week calling for the creation of what they're terming as an abandoned horse task force. Senator Robin Webb of Grayson and Democratic Senator as well, Johnny Ray Turner of Pressburg, are co-sponsoring legislation. They say this task force would discuss the problems caused by the growing population of abandoned horses, as well as ways to stop individuals from abandoning their horses and ways to remove these horses that are currently running at large, becoming feral, and reproducing a subsequent generation of undomesticated horses. Uh, the resolution also saying that the problem has has gone largely unattended, leading to lawless actions such as the recent shooting of abandoned horses in Floyd County. During, or as pertaining to that case, reward information or a reward for information in that case is up to $23,000. And they say this new task force would aim to take inventory of just how many abandoned horses there are free roaming in the Commonwealth as well as what their state health-wise and otherwise, is. Um, grazing horses left to do just that on strip jobs has been going on for many, many years. The Kentucky Humane Society says that that problem became exponentially worse after the 2008 recession when individuals just found themselves simply after losing their jobs and paychecks unable to pay and keep their animals and turning them loose to, to graze, mostly on strip jobs. Now, that leads me to the following report, a local one, one of a few that we'll be talking about over the course of the next several weeks and possibly months. Right now, I'm going to introduce to you Jenny Grolke of the Appalachian Horse Project, the executive director. She's also the former executive director of the Kentucky Horse Council, as well as Bernice Amberg, a board member for the Kentucky Horse Project, two members of the organization that is dedicated to helping Kentucky's free-roaming horses. The Appalachian Horse Project has actually been active here in McGoffin, Floyd, Breathitt, Nod, and other eastern Kentucky counties for over four years now. And while they are currently active here in McGoffin, Floyd, and neighboring counties, they are not currently here in response to the horrific shooting of those 20 horses in Floyd County. They have actually been and are here today continuing to respond, as they have now for years, to calls of horses made sometimes by landowners, sometimes by individuals who can't keep their animals, sometimes by individuals who are seeing these horses in dire straits, animals that need their help, often giving these animals a second chance at a better life. And, of course, eliminating or at least helping a problem in the process. The Appalachian Horse Project was started to address the issue of free roaming horses in the mountains in cases where they were getting into places they shouldn't be or they had uh, issues with health basically whether it's injuries or not enough food and so that was the main purpose initially. Um, and then we also added tourism after thinking about it a little bit where we will bring people up to the mountains to see these horses um, because that enables us to earn a little bit of money which we immediately put back into feeding and caring for the horses. But we have two, um, four paid tour guides and we're listed on Airbnb, if anybody's familiar with that as an experience so people can go on and register through Airbnb and choose a tour time and pay. And whether it be through ultimately helping with tourism or adoption, so far the Appalachian Horse Project has rescued about 20 horses in the area and they're seeing the numbers rise as well, of course, as the need. Lately, because of the drought this of last fall, um, we have a lot of free-roaming horses coming off the mountains and down into the uh, roads 
and into people's yards and the neighborhoods. And that's, they're in search of food and salt right now. Um, so because of that, we've had several calls from five or six different counties, and we try to help each one of them out and set up a corral and try to catch the free roaming horses that are uh, causing the problems. And then we follow the KRS, the Kentucky statute that says um, a free roaming horse that is caught first have to have permission from the county judge executive's office and we work with them and the animal control officers and we had to have them vetted and then they had to be posted on the stray hold website and pictures in the sheriff's office and after 15 days if they're unclaimed we can go ahead and uh, adopt them out for anyone who would like to apply for adoption, you can do so at AppalachianHorseCenter.org, which many people have. There are a lot of great success stories. Mares being adopted along with their colts getting the nutrition they need. Older horses, which many may have appeared to have thought were close to the end of their service, being adopted by families who wanted to teach their kids how to ride or be around a calmer animal. And there are some stories of horses being adopted and giving a renewed life, living a bit like royalty. We brought in um, a Tennessee Walker gelding uh, about two years ago, and he was um, severely underweight, but not um, bad enough where he had any internal organ damage or anything. And we fed him and got him fattened back up and uh, turned him out to pasture because I didn't have anybody available to adopt him. A lot of people want to know, can, is he rideable yet? And of course, in the first two or three months, you can't ride them if they're really thin. So I got him fattened back up and um, had him shod, um, put shoes on him, mm -hmm. and started to work him under saddle. And he was excellent. He had the best gait, slow, and was not scary at all. Um, we took him past four-wheelers and everything on the mountain. and. Um, I still kept him for another month or two before I could get interest in him, and I took him to Leslie County Horse Show just to show him off. And there was a gentleman there who has, has horses, and he also works at Camp Nathaniel in their horse program. Camp Nathaniel is in Knott County. And now um, Rudy, as he's known now, we called him Ragu. Um, Rudy is um, giving trail rides to kids at Camp Nathaniel in Knott County. Excellent, he's doing excellent. And Jenny and Bernice want me to stress that they can't, nor do they want, to take and rehome and adopt out all the free roaming horses. It's just not feasible and it's not possible. But they want everyone to know that there are resources available if you would like to adopt, or if you or someone you know is considering free roaming their horse because they think they can no longer take care of it. There are resources for you too. If horse owners... Um if something um, happens and they are maybe um, become ill or financially cannot afford their horse anymore and they want to um, donate it or surrender it to us, um, we can find, help find a new home. If they need a stallion gelded, there's uh, grant money for that and we can steer them in the right way. And there's also grant money for hay to help provide it if say they lost a job. There's programs and grant money for that and we can help them with the application process and get that going so they can keep their horse if they'd like to. And I, I also wanted to add that the way we price our horses, our horses that got adopted out do have a fee, um, but we try not to price them any higher than what we felt we, the money we took in to care for them. Sometimes we'll, it'll be a little bit more because some horses you lose money on and some horses you make a little money on so it has to balance out so that we can be sustainable financially otherwise. Um, so if, if people say, well, you're getting a fee, you're making money off this, and we're like, we're not making money because hay costs money, vets cost money, gas costs yeah. money, <laughs> you know, there's, there's yeah. a lot of costs. So, yeah. But even taking that into account, the fees are very low considering what um, I think the adopters are getting. Now, two more things. Help and volunteers always welcomed. They often, as they have just recently and will be doing in the near future, will go to corral and collect these animals, quarantine them, as you heard, and uh, check them, vet them, and as such, and you know, a helping hand 
or 20 is never a bad thing. If that's something that might fall near and dear to your heart or for other reasons, well, they would welcome uh, that input. They are also looking for input of another kind as well. Finding another means for these animals, um, an equine therapy location. There are large and nice locations for equine therapy across other parts of Kentucky and Lexington. I believe at the Horse Park, a multi-million dollar facility, if I'm not mistaken, for which a lot of folks travel to on a routine basis. They'd like to have something, of course, much smaller, a barn big enough to hold maybe three or four horses, but and then maybe grow from there. But they are interested in getting input and some help in creating an equine therapy location here in our area. Also, 4-H programs like they have started horse programs uh, in Knott, Leslie, and Breathitt County, they would be interested as well doing here in McGoffin County. The Dumas Rescue Organization is another rescue uh, organization or operation that is working with the McGoffin County government as well. Uh, also like the Appalachian Horse Project, we'll be talking with them in the coming days with local government officials and others about what is going to be, I'm sure, something that's getting a lot of attention for a lot longer. With that covered one more thing to cover before i'm out the door taking that jaunt to belfry one more time this basketball season i say that you never know could be going back we've enjoyed every bit of they have been absolutely nothing but hus hus hospitable and they've got a really good concession stand thank goodness it's just an hour and a half trick with that said we've got conditions uh, for your weekend that will include showers and possibly well no some winds as well. I'm not looking at any severe weather. We're looking at a mixed bag for your weekend. Rainy and windy Saturday, sunny and cold for your Sunday. On that note, clear skies will continue tonight, and they'll be cold ones. Down to 24, we'll go. We'll see a northeasterly wind on average, maybe 6 miles per hour or so, becoming calm later on. Tomorrow, we should perk up to about 40 degrees. Um, you know, trying to sound as optimistic as possible. It's close to average. You know, it's not 64, but it's close to average. Clouds are going to be on the increase throughout your Friday. Those clouds will continue to increase until Friday night. Right now, I'm really thinking three or four in the morning on Saturday morning. Uh, we'll start to give us shower chances and a pretty good chance, a 60 to 70 percent chance of showers very early before we wake up on Saturday morning, continuing throughout your Saturday and into your Saturday night as well. Temps on Saturday should range between 52 for your high, 25 for your low. Winds, like we have been seeing more often than not, it seems as though, southwesterly 10 to 20, maybe 40 mile per hour gust on your Saturday. And Saturday looks to be pretty much containing all of the windy and wet weather because by the time Sunday wakes up, well, technically we wake up on Sunday, it's going to clear out pretty nicely and leaving us maybe a few flurries flying about Sunday, but calm. Cold, but calm. About 33 degrees for your daytime high, partly sunny that night. And back to the teens for the first time in a while Sunday night as well, under partly cloudy, but still calm and dry skies. Winding down your weekend on a cold, clear note after a windy, wet Saturday. Next week, Monday, Martin Luther King Day, we will stay on the colder side of things. Still sunny and clear, partly sunny at least, 29 degrees, still in the upper teens Monday night. Maybe a few flurries late Monday night as well. That's about the only weather maker we've got next week through Thursday at least. From there, it's low 30s Tuesday and sunny and 20s. Low 20s for nighttime lows. Similar but better conditions Wednesday and Thursday, pushing near 40 and 40 on Wednesday and Thursday. Lows still in the 20s each night, Wednesday and Thursday, but still sun and clouds and no rain or wind or snow or anything else to speak of. But some cold, bright, sunny days ahead. And with that, I am out the door off to Belfry highlights for the boys match up on tomorrow night's program, as well as other news that we will have for you, trying to squeeze it all in before we wrap up this week of programming here on Your News Today. We hope to see you back here tomorrow night for all that and more. For now, thank you for watching, and good night.